Hey guys, so before we get into looking at an exponential function, I thought I would do another problem for you on your worksheet from yesterday. So we're going to take a look at number 61. So you may want to pause the video here and take out your worksheet or put it in your notes and copy it over to your worksheet a little bit later. So we want to simplify this. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look for some rules that we can apply. <clears throat> first rule that we can see here is we have an exponent raised to an exponent. <clears throat> and so we know we should multiply. Okay? And that's okay if it's a negative exponent for now. We'll take care of that a little bit later. Now on the denominator side, I see that I have this quantity, and I know it's a quantity because of the parentheses, it's a grouping symbol. This quantity here being raised to the negative 4. So let's just get rid of that negative 4. Um, let's make it positive 4 by moving this quantity to the numerator. Okay. Notice my exponent went from negative 4 to positive 4. Okay, so what could we do next? Well, we have a couple options. First thing we could do, we could move this x to the negative 12. We could move that down to the denominator, which I think I'll do. And that's going to make it positive 12. Notice that when you move it, notice this is all, this is, this is multiplication here. And when you move it down here, it's still multiplication, okay? Um, the other option I could have done, which I'm going to do now, is I'm going to go ahead and apply this 4 to this group. So we're going to have 2 to the 4th power, which is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So we get 16. And then we have an exponent raised to an exponent, so we get 12. We have an exponent to an exponent, we get 12 again. And I'm going to go ahead, and since this is multiplication right here, I know that I can add these two. These are like bases here. So I can add those. And I'll get x to the 16th and y squared. Okay, so now we're dividing our dividing line. So dividing the coefficients, we get 8. The like base is x. 12 minus 16 is negative 4. Like base is y. 12 minus 2 is 10. And let's fix this up just a little bit. Keep the 8 in the numerator, the y to the 10th power in the numerator, and then the x will come down, and the negative 4 becomes positive 4. Okay. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at exponential functions. So here we have an example of an exponential function that we're going to graph. We have f of x equals 3 to the x power. Now what makes this an exponential function is notice where the x is located. The x is located in the exponent. And since it's located in the exponent, it makes an exponential function. So what about the parent? Well, there is, a, uh, there is an unlimited amount of parents uh, because the base could be uh, just about any number except zero. The base cannot be equal to zero. So this could be y equals 1 half to the x power 
could be 5 to the x power, 10 to the x power, 10.5 to the x power. Uh, it could be any number. So let's go ahead and start off by graphing y equals 3 to the x power. This would be the, the parent function, okay, because this function will not have any transformations. So to graph this, we'll set up a table and we'll choose some numbers. And we'll calculate their y values. So 3. And if we plug the negative 2 in, we get 3 to the negative 2 power, which is 1 over 3 squared, which is 1 ninth. So when x is negative 2, y is 1 ninth. So about right there. Plug the negative 1 in for x. So we get 1 over 3. So when x is negative 1, y is 1 third. Three to the zero, which we know is one. Three to the first power, which is three. And three to the second power, which is nine. And then we draw in our graph. Now when you draw in the graph, Notice how it curves sharply down here. And so when it curves sharply like this, something special is happening. It's getting closer and closer and closer to a certain number. And we'll talk about that in just a moment. So, this graph is getting closer and closer and closer to a certain number. What number do y'all think it's going to be? Well, we know at negative 2 we get 1 ninth. What if we continue? What if we go over to negative 3? We would get 3 to the negative third, which is 1 over 3 to the third, which is 1 27. So as we go further and further left, what's happening to the number? What number is it getting closer and closer to? If you said zero, you would be right on. Zero. It's getting closer and closer to zero. Do you think that this graph, that there would be some number we could plug in for x and we would get zero? Let's try a big number, like negative 10. Not a big number, but a really small number, like negative 10. So we'd have 3, plug the negative 10 in for x. So we'd have 1 over 3 to the 10th power. Is that going to give us 0? No, it's going to give us a very, very small number. My calculator might even throw a fit. 1 over 59,049, which is a very, very small number, but it's not 0. So that means we're getting closer and closer and closer to 0, but never, ever, ever reaching it. And so what that means is, is that we have an asymptote, an asymptote located at y equals 0. We have an asymptote. It's, and so 
let's take a look back here at our generic uh, function here. So in this case, the base of our function is 3. Okay, and here's our x and our y. So now what about the transformations? Well, if I want to put the transformations in, the a, remember that the a represents the vertical stretch or vertical compression, gets multiplied times b, the base raised to the x. Now our grouping symbol is going to be up here in the exponent. So this is going to be our horizontal translation, our left and our right. And remember, it's always the opposite. And then our vertical translation goes on the end. Now, this number is going to be what's going to be associated with your asymptote. So in this case, our k value is 0. Nothing's being added or subtracted. So 0 is going to represent our horizontal asymptote. So let's do a little transforming. Transform, transforming. Sorry, it's Monday after spring break, and I'm getting a little tongue-tied here. So let's say we want a horizontal, I'm sorry, a vertical compression of 1 half. And so we're going to apply this to this parent, 3 to the x. And let's say we want to translate it 2 units to the right. So that would be x minus 2. And let's say we want to translate it 1 unit down. So again, we have a vertical compression, a horizontal translation of 2 units to the right, a vertical translation of one unit down. And remember, this number is going to be associated with the horizontal asymptote. So you, if you were to graph this, you could put a horizontal asymptote at negative one. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to graph this transformation. To the parent. And so again, like I said, the vertical translation is one unit down. So I can start out by doing a horizontal asymptote. Okay, and um, something important that I forgot to, to note here is on your parents, when there's no transformations, when you transform or translate uh, the original parent, your starting point is always going to be at 0, 1. Kind of like when you transform a, a quadratic, it's at 0, 0. That's where you start when you go left and right and up and down. Here, you start here at 0, 1. So doing my transformations, I would go two units to the right and one unit down. So from 0, 1, we go two to the right and one unit down. All right, I'm going to stop here. We're going to finish up this and talk about end behavior and increasing and decreasing on part two. Uh, so I'll see you in class tomorrow.